<laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. Hey, it's good to be in church, isn't it? Hey, God has a word for us this morning, and a very tailored word, and I really believe that with all my heart. It's, uh, it really is about getting through and tapping in uh, to God's grace. My title that, uh, actually, ty- the, what I typed in the title is this, Full of Grace. That your house, and this, we're still in the series on family, and really all of the word applies to our family all the time, but this is that your house can be full of grace, full of God's help. Full of God's gifts. Full of God's gifts. I want my house full of God's gifts. But the Bible tells us that there, there, there's something to receive His grace. It is by faith. It is by faith, the Bible tells us, it is uh, by grace through faith that you and I are saved. By grace through faith. So there is a conduit. There's an avenue. There's a way that we receive God's gifts or God's grace into our lives. And it is faith. But faith so many times is shaking because the word that we hold, when we hold any word besides God's word, we have unbelief. So it's not your faith. You only need this much faith. The Bible tells us if you had faith just this much, just the size of a mustard seed, just this. So it's not your faith. It's not a faith problem. It's an unbelief problem. It's when we hold a different word that challenges a God word that you and I struggle to receive or, in a sense, block the flow of grace into our lives. And so this morning, we're going to look at having a family and a house and relationships full of grace. Because how many of you are just, just love when you just God's at work in a relationship? Yeah. Have you ever had like a relationship where you're trying to make it work and it's just not working? How about in family? You ever had it where you're trying to make it work and you're just like, God, help me. Have you ever, even to the point, you sought for it with tears, but you just couldn't get what you wanted because there was another and there was was an opposing word. And opposing words will always, it'll close the door. And I'll tell you, we say this a lot. We talked about this on on Father's Day. We talked about honoring your father and your mother, not because it has a promise, but because God said so. And we we say this a lot here, that honor opens the door to what heaven sends. You know, Jesus in his hometown, he wasn't honored there. And there he wasn't received, and they didn't receive it, what God sent. But can I tell you, um, the person that's next to you, across from you, beside you, behind you, in your home, they were sent from God. They were sent from God. And and they're a gift. They're, They're a gift. Uh, and, and so, anyway, this morning we're gonna uh, we're gonna pick up. I got a few a few passages we're gonna read, and um, I think that that's probably some of the best thing we can do is actually read scripture when we come to church, uh, not just hear uh, the latest greatest uh, any kind, or just a bunch of sayings, but like let's put the rubber let's let it hit the road and let's and let's read the scripture here. Okay. So hang with me this morning, and we're going to go through some stuff, and you're going to see as we look through some different scriptures how God puts some things. It, it, Jesus doesn't just tell stories like, oh, I have, oh, I have this other story, uh, and then he's walking, oh, and I have this other story. One time this happened, and, and I, oh, there's a parable. Oh, yeah, there's this parable over here. How many of you know when Jesus told a parable, he was dealing with what was going on at the moment? He was dealing with hearts uh, in the crowd. He was dealing with the disciples whatever, animosity toward one another, or he was dealing with a rich young ruler. He didn't start talking about the fish over there and one time. No, he was very intentional about when he told certain things. So even when you see certain things in the scriptures and you see these these stories and or when Jesus talks about them, right after somebody was offended, he tells a story. Right after somebody uh, was, was afraid, he tells a story. Right, he, he, t- he tells us, he addresses the moment, okay? So now, let's pick up in Mark chapter 9, 14 through 29, and it says, And when he had, uh, he had came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and the scribes were disputing with them immediately. Uh, when he saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him and greeted him, and he asked, Scribes, why, what, what, what are you guys talking about? What are you going to... What are you discussing with them? So there's this commotion going on, and the commotion is what you're going to hear here in a moment, which is about these disciples couldn't cast out this demon that was throwing this boy in the fire, okay? Um, He says, what are you arguing with him about, he asked. I'm going to read from here because I have a different translation on my computer. Uh, A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you, 
I brought, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth. He, he gnashes and grinds his teeth, becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. So here I am. I finally found Jesus. I'm looking for him. Where's he at? Where's Jesus at? It's just, it's chaos. He's upset with his disciples. They couldn't do it, right? And, and, and here we are. Uh, he's, Jesus scolds his disciples. He says, you unbelieving generation. So he's, he, he, he's rebuking their unbelief. He's rebuking their unbelief. He said, Jesus, uh, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him to him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground, rolled on the ground, foaming at the mouth. He's like making a show, right? He's making sure that Jesus is seeing what the disciples also saw. He is going to challenge, he's challenging Jesus right now. He's challenging what Jesus is about to say. Even before it hits there, he's trying to sow something. Oh, well, this is a pretty big one. This, is a, this isn't your normal situation. This is like a... a this is, this is bigger than just the average. This is worse than just the... It, this has been this, like this longer than... So this is kind of the way it, it... Like Jesus asked him, how long? So I just love it. He doesn't go, oh my, oh my, oh me. He, 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 he says, uh, hey, so uh, how long has that guy been like that? Like he just kind of leaves the boy on the ground. He doesn't go, oh, uh, hold him. Somebody hold him. He's hurting himself. He just says, so how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. So how many of you know when something's hung around for a while, it can prophesy you that because it was yesterday and yesterday, 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 and this is the way it was, this is the way it'll be tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. It doesn't seem like it could change because you've already tried to make it change. How many of you know that a father taking his son, he probably went to a few physicians already. How many of you know he tried, how many of you know he probably uh, had some gifts brought to an altar? How many of you know that this, this didn't just happen? If you have a, a son or a daughter that you love, how many of you know you've maybe sought the Lord on it a few times? Well, see here that he actually cried with tears, Lord help me. So this isn't a new thing. It often throws him in the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, please take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said, if you can. If, if you can. And here's, the, here's the, the, even in this moment, the Lord, uh, this is how we a lot of times do things. We, we say, God, you. God, you. God, you. It's on you, God. It's all on you, God. It's all on you, God. And Jesus is like, if I can, we're going to flip these tables. My will my will hasn't changed. I've demonstrated. And when you see me, you see the Father. I, there's a demonstration that if your father, being evil, knows how to give gifts, how much more does my Father in heaven? What do you, what, my character is not in question here. My ability is not in question here. What's on the table here is what's been going on in your heart. What word have you held in your heart for a very long time? Or even so, could have just been deposited. How many of you know walking by faith and walking in faith, just because you were in faith doesn't mean you are walking in faith? Because another word could take that faith and cause you and I to get into this place of unbelief, which you'll see that the disciples had been going out and like, man, just things were happening. Why do you think that this guy brought this little boy to the disciples? Because... Demons were being cast out. People were being healed. There was deliverance all over the place. But this one didn't happen, and something entered into the disciples' hearts. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. So he, the, what the issue is, is, is belief. But is it belief? Then he says this. Go to the next verse. One who believes. Immediately the boy's father said, I do believe. Help me overcome what I don't believe. So there... When you and I hold unbelief, it challenges, or that's greater than... Our, when you and I hold unbelief, that, that trumps what we do believe. Because we just undid it. It's kind of like uh, planting a garden and then pulling it up. Planting it and pulling it up. You know that that corn will grow, but you come right behind and you're like, yeah, sure, it's hot out here. It's just, I don't... Yeah, you're just pulling up what you just planted. Unbelief. 
You just unbeliefed it. You just unplanted it. You just un... So he said, help my unbelief. Go on, next verse. He said, when Jesus saw the crowds was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. And so just a huge commotion is going on. The, the crowds are gathering. The, 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 the boy's still flailing on the ground while he's talking. This crowd's gathering. It's just a big scene. And uh, he rebuked the impure spirit, the deaf and the mute spirit. He said, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, oh, my, he just killed him. It's like they couldn't do it. At least he didn't kill him. He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and then and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciple asked him, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind only comes out by by prayer or prayer and fasting. Now, I want to I want to um, I want to talk the, again this morning about about unbelief and, and managing unbelief, not even just managing, but casting it out, dealing with it. Uh, when things get into our heart, there's an answer. Uh, when, 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 what you, when what we saw causes unbelief, it, it, when we see certain things, there, it, it challenges what we think could, God could do over and over and over again. This is what happened. And, and, and so the disciples are asking Jesus a question, how, can, how come we couldn't? And he said, that, he said that this doesn't come out. He's not talking about the demon. He's talking about unbelief. This unbelief doesn't come out except for by prayer and fasting. What is prayer and what is fasting? Prayer is communion with God, but so oftentimes it is, uh, like it tells us in Philippians, where we bring our worries and our cares and we give them to Jesus. Where we give, put them in his hands instead of our hands. If I'm going to trust the Lord with something, if I, when I pray, if I trust the Lord uh, and I put, I, I, I'm going to have to, let me say it this way, I'm going to have to trust the Lord to put it in his hands. I'm going to have to believe that he can do it. I'm gonna, if I'm going to let go of it. Sometimes we, we pray, but we make sure that when we pray and we give it to God, we have that, you know, that good, really tight hold on to it, you know, double knot it, triple knot it, you know, you know, cinch it, you know. Okay, there you go, Jesus. We'll let you work on that for a little bit, but if you can't do it quick enough and the way I think it should be done or I'm not seeing with my eyes the results, again, I'm not seeing then, then are you believing in the first place? So if I can't give it and let go, then, then so prayer, prayer is a key, but also something that we're, we're going to talk about this morning, and really it's house rules. Again, there's another title right there, um, is fasting. How many of you, as a family, I think this happens for, I know this happens with boys and families. I don't know, I don't have girls. I have three little boys. Uh, that are not so little anymore, but my youngest one, uh, he is at the stage where he still wants to race dad to the car. Okay, now the rest of them, they don't even ask that anymore because they know uh, they're going to get whooped. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Oh, that, it, never mind. It switched, switched. Okay, okay, so it switched. And actually, I pulled, my, I pulled something on Easter racing my youngest boy, so I haven't raced him since Easter to the car. So um, don't t- take off on Easter Sunday, you know. Uh, anyway, but one of the things that in, as you're growing up uh, and, and kids are little, they want to race dad. You know, they want to race mom. I'll race you fast. They're, everything is, as you're, when you're a little kid, it's, hey, watch me, watch me. I want to go fast. I want to go fast. I want to go fast. And so we, we teach our kids, uh, and maybe your kids are in sports, and the goal is, you know, run fast. Come on, buddy, run, run, run. And so there's just this idea, and I'm not talking about fasting as running fast, but I am talking about it as something that should be in our homes. Because fasting is the denial of self. So in Matthew chapter 6, I didn't give you these verses here. I'm just going to talk. I'm talking from my heart here as we can, you can go look at that. Jesus says, when you, when you, come on, help me out. When you pray, when you, because these are, there's three things that Jesus talks about in Matthew 6, 1 through 21. He says, when you pray, when you fast, and when you give. Right? Okay, all three, right? Fast, pray, and give. All of these are, 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 are things or disciplines as in a home or in a life that should be. We should teach our kids. How many of you teach your two-year-old, give your brother the toy back? Huh? Anybody teaching the kids? Right? 
We're teaching our kids to share. Hopefully, you're teaching your kids to share. Hopefully, you're, we're teaching this, right? We got that down. How many of you, when, it's so cute when, uh, you know, when you got your two or three-year-old and you go, hey, buddy, you want to pray over dinner? Okay. Isn't that awesome? We're, so we're teaching our kids to pray. Like, or, or, or maybe they come home uh, for after church and, and, and you're, you're not feeling well, and they say, Mama, we can pray for you because Jesus healed us, okay? How, many, how, how cool is that, right? Childlike faith. That, that was the Holy Spirit speaking to their spirit to, to move. So we're teaching them to give and be generous and, and nope, share. You need to share. You need to give. We just kind of talked about sharing earlier. We, we talked now, we're talking about prayer. We got to pray, got to pray. But are we teaching? Fast, besides running? Is that like a four-letter word? That's a four-letter F word, isn't it? Fast, fast. Oh, fast. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. That just popped out. Oh, we are fasting. What is fast? That's, uh, that's something we only do maybe in January. Uh, and we're going to pull out the Daniel plan and figure out how many ways we can make beans taste good. <sighs> what are you fasting? We're giving, we're praying. What are, we, what are you fasting? Here's the deal. And here's, here's what fasting is oftentimes. You have people go, I'm fasting I'm fasting right now. You know why they fast? Because they want an answer. Well, that's not why you fast. You fast to deny your outward man, to deny your flesh. This is why you fast, to deny the outward man. Can I tell you much of what we, much of the challenge uh, that I've heard uh, and, and I hear of people being able to uh, discern the Lord's voice is because the voice of this is so loud. And yet, there's these principles that are given to us uh, that when you do this, when you do this, these are disciplines that are to be in our lives. When you do this, uh, and so because of that, this flesh is very loud. It notices, it notices a suffered wrong really easy. Anybody there? Right? Like you cut me off. <laughs> if I didn't have a trailer on right now, I would. <laughs> Actually, I got a trailer on right now. Here we go. <laughs> Hit the trailer. Right? We, the, the response is, you did this? I'm going to. That's the flesh response. Right? That's, not just, that's just not just me. That's, that's, that's a part of me. Did you know there's part of you that doesn't want to respond that way? That's awesome, isn't it? That there's part of you and me that doesn't want to respond just, you cut me, I'm going to cut you back. Or part of you and I that when we see a situation, a boy, like we just read about, we want to respond in faith. There's part of you that wants to respond that way. But there's also part of you that wants to respond like this. How long has he been like that? Well, hold on. So what, what, what was the report over here? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I know, but this is going on this way. Well, how, well what are the interest rates right now? Uh, how are we? Part of us wants to respond that way. And so that's the part that doesn't want to respond to what, a, what the Holy Spirit would bring. See, he's such a good job. He does such a good job. He's a helper, but he's a good helper. How many of you ever had a helper that wasn't such a great helper? The Holy Spirit's a good helper. He brings help. What you need, when you need it, how you need it. That's the Holy Spirit. And he'll bring you the word of God, and he'll remind you of what the Lord said to, so that you and I could go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose that over all of this. Okay? So we're, we're talking about this this morning. We're, the, now let's look a little bit. Um, how, we're going to look at just a, a number of examples this morning, but when, when you and I yield to what God says, and we don't yield to it these eyes and what the, this thinks, but we yield to what the Lord says, how it can change everything. 
So we know that Jesus didn't look at the boy flopping on the ground like the disciples did. Prayer and fasting, in other words, fasting, denying of flesh and self, it, that, that, that work that was going on on the ground wouldn't have held as much weight because they would ha- have denied their self what they see, feel, perceive. See, when you fast, you have to deny yourself. you got to deny some real feelings, like real feelings. Like, it's real. It's really, hangry is a real thing. You have to deny some real things. It's not, again, fasting is not to get an answer. It's to deny a part of you that's at war with who you are. See, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And this outward suit that we have so often wants to call the shots. It burns with lust. Did you know that there are feelings that you gave your mind, your will, and emotion to because your body had a chemical reaction? Young boys, you're not just some evil, dirty thing because you had a thought that originated in some hormone. And this hormone shot into your body. And that cut, this is what happens as guys get older, or something a little less testosterone. Right now, testosterone is shooting into your bodies. And you're having to learn how to manage and figure that out. And that testosterone causes, well, it happens when in deer season. It just causes this, burp, 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 burp. That's a grunt. It just instantly, just when that shoots in, it just instant thought is, uh, I got to have an outward expression. The flesh. The flesh. The Bible tells us about the flesh, the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh are evil. So you and I need to learn to govern the flesh. You know, you've heard the, 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 the old uh, parable, you know, whatever dog you feed, or there's two wolves. You've heard there's a hundred different ways to say that, but whatever dog you feed, you will, will win. Okay? So now let's, let's look here. When you and I learn to... To yield to, and, and Jesus is, he, he was really big on teaching his disciples how, uh, how to yield to that. He actually asked them some questions. Who do you say that I am? And some said like this, well, I don't know, what do they say? Well, what do you think? I need to call mom. I need to call dad. I need to talk to my friend about this. What do you think I should do here? No, no, no. You know, if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, there's a lot of times you know what you should do. The question is, are you willing to do what you know you should do? Am I willing to do? Am I willing to walk by faith when it looks like this? By, wait, we're to walk by faith, not by sight. Doesn't that Bible tell us that? The, there is a war on your faith, and it, it, its basis is what you see. The war against your faith, to get unbelief in, into you and me, is based on what we see. Based on what we see or think or have heard. Like, it's just like, I I didn't see it, but I hear the screaming. I'm trying to jump over the crowd and see what's going on. How many of you know what you see or or hear? It's it's given us what we're so prone to making decisions. I'm going to eat that because, oh, I don't want that. It's not hot. I mean, we get this, we we get Starbucks, or or, it's like, uh, can, can you heat that up, please? Or, Oh, this isn't cold. Can I get some ice in that, please? We make decisions how we want things because of how they feel. All the time, we're we're yielding to, ah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't like that. I don't like that. Do we have any more sugar? Well, that's not good for you. Yeah, yeah, but I I don't care. That's what I like. Like front line on Thursday night, it was it was it was a good one. It was hard. Um, Not the message, but the food. Job gave us dates, bro. Like, there was no Fritos, there was no Cheetos, there was no crackers, there was no bugles, there was no Chex Mix, there was dates, like big old fat dates, y'all. Dates, I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> it's Jesus food, he said. Jesus, man, Jesus. If you were a, a disciple, a follower of Jesus, you had a bag full of dates. He's like, you always had dates. Dates are awesome, man. I'm like, all right. That's right. My flesh says otherwise. 
My mouth says, well, that reminds me of the Daniel fast when you couldn't have anything, but you could have a date and try to put it in something to make it taste good. And it was her- horrible for me. It's just that, like, hmm, maybe y'all like dates. But is there something that you don't eat because you don't like it that would be good for you? Could our flesh be ruling us in some ways? And we believe something different, and yet we're yielded a different way. Okay, let's keep going here. So uh, let's look... Um, Let's look here real quick. John chapter 1, verse 42. Jesus calls out Peter. Well, his name wasn't Peter. His name was Simon. And now Jesus says, but I call you. But I call you Cephas or solid rock, Peter. He he, he brought to Jesus. He's looking at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. This is what you are. You are, and Simon means shifty, shaken, Shaking reed, or and son of a drunkard. Interesting. That's what you are. You are a son of a drunkard who is a loud mouth. Look at Peter. But here's what Jesus says. I'm going to call you Cephas, which when translated means Peter, or Cephas, which means rock. God calls him something different. Now let's, let's go forward to when the Lord asks the disciples, who do you say that I am? How many of you remember this account? Maybe you don't. Jesus is like, Trying to teach his disciples to not look with these eyes, but to check, to check from the inside or check what, and you have to make the call. You and I have to make the call. Unbelief, belief, you and I have to make the call. You can't ride mama's faith. It's not your mama's faith, it's your faith. What are you doing with your faith? What are you doing with what God said? Okay? And, and so let's go to, uh, to Matthew chapter 16, 17 through 18. And so they're, they're like, oh, some say this, and... Some say that, and some say you're Elijah, some say, uh, and he said, Jesus replied, uh, but who do you say that I am? And and Peter says, you're the Christ, this is verse 16, and he says, you're the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus says to him in verse 17, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Wait a minute, he called him back to, he said, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Next verse. He talks to him right here about flesh and blood and natural things. And he said, you know what? That wasn't revealed to you by flesh and blood. Like Simon, shifty, shaken, reed was revealed to you. He said, and either I tell you that you also are Peter. I say what God says about you. The same way that you heard what God said about me, I'm declaring to you what God says about you. And I say to you. You are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell won't overcome it. There's something going on here. He's teaching the disciples where you and I are to gather our information. It's to be information. I'm to be informed from the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you and me. Not by all the outward wisdom and all this. We're going to look, keep looking here. Um, and, and here's the deal. I don't care how long we've been saved or how long and how much you've known the Lord. Uh, God had to remind a man of God by the name of Samuel. Hey, hey, buddy, just so you know, as you go in there, you know, as you're trying to make your way um, here and you're going to anoint the next king, um, you're going to see a lot of things that look good. But God, you know, let's say it this way. Man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. God tells Samuel this. As he's going in to anoint a king, he's the one that carries the word of the Lord, and he's having to be reminded by the Lord, don't look at the outside. Can I tell you this morning? Don't look at the outside. Don't look at the outside to determine your next move. Don't just look at the outside to determine what's going on. Don't look at the outside and the feelings and this and that. Don't look at the outside to call your son, you worthless piece of no good. Uh, No. Cephas, not Simon. What does the Lord say about your son? What does the Lord, I don't see that. What does the Lord say about that situation? What does the Lord say? What is, he looks, not, not only does he look at the heart, can I say it this way? He designed us to look with the heart. God looks at the heart. But he designed us to look with the heart, from the ins- with the inner man, 
to look from, with, from within. That's how he designed us. And so how many of you know when, when the Lord said uh, to Samuel, um, this, is in, this is in 1 Samuel 16, uh, 6 through 13, um, but when the Lord told Samuel that don't, don't look at the outward appearance, what do you think Samuel had to do? What do you think Samuel was doing in that moment? He's like, hey, don't look at the outward sign, but look at the heart. Okay. Uh, can you guys uh, unbutton your shirts here? I need to look at the heart. What do you think Samuel was doing? In that moment when he was trying to decide, is it this one? Because he's tall, dark, and handsome. Is it this one? Is it this one? It's none of them. How did he determine it was none of them? He was receiving the word of the Lord. When, if we're going to receive the word of the Lord, we can't use these eyes. This is where our family is not full of grace. The gifts of God, because it's by faith. But so many times we're not accessing faith because we see too much. We've seen too much. We can't honor, we can't even see and really believe that heaven sent them. (laughs) Because, well, you know. And we become critical, resentful. Let's keep going here. Uh, I'll just give you that verse so you can put it in your, in your notes here. Um, oh, let's see here. Uh, let's go to verse 7, Matthew six, or 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at the appearance or at his physical stature, uh, for I have refused him. He says, for the Lord doesn't see a man as, as, as the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. How many of you know we're not to look at the, the outward appearance is not what's to direct our life? I know that I'm just repeating the same thing. My dad told me this one time. You tell them, you tell them again, and then you tell them what you told them. And then maybe they'll get it. You tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, and then you tell them again, and then maybe they'll get it. So I'm talking to us this morning about not looking with these eyes, but instead trusting in the Lord what like Proverbs chapter 3, with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Let's keep going here. So we, we find that what happened when Samuel did not yield to his eyes, it changed the destiny of a man. It changed the destiny of a family. No, no. It changed the destiny of a nation. No, no. It changed the destiny of the world. Son of David. Wow. Could 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 there really be? Could could the could God God's word really have be that significant continually in our lives? He that he want just just by you and I yielding to what he says over what we see that our sons or daughters or husbands or wives or friends or co-workers could be transformed and receive something. See, what happened when he spoke and when he didn't look with his eyes, the Lord had him anoint him. And that you, he couldn't have done been the king without having been anointed. Did, can I tell you that, that so many times the anointing that we're to be receiving is in words that you or somebody else carries? The strength to stand and be who God said. To be Cephas. To be Peter the rock. It required a word from heaven. For him to move from shifty, shaky son of a drunkard to a solid rock, it took a word that was outside of these eyes. It took a word that was just, in a sense, just right here. That the Lord brought right here. He said, and I call you. I'm talking to you about what I don't see, what I don't. I call you, Peter. Again, we're talking about full of grace. You want some grace? You want some grace in your house? So, it's, and let's, let's go here. So, um, okay. So, 
we're, we're talking about unbelief. We're talking about yielding to, uh, not yielding to eyes, but yielding to heart. But so many times we struggle uh, to yield to our heart because this flesh is so strong. Right? And so we're talking, uh, we're talking about the, one of the keys is, is fasting. We're, we haven't got there yet, but let's, let's, let's go here. Matthew, or Mark chapter 11, 20 through 25. And then when they were walking back in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from its roots. Peter remembered it and said, oh, wow, look, Rabbi. Wow, whoa, whoa, Jesus, what you said actually happened. Can I tell you that what Jesus had said had been happening for a while? In their midst. Jesus, they, they, had seen, they had seen Jesus work for, for a little while. Okay? And now I'm talking about when Jesus talks about a parable... He talks about something that's going on, not something that's just out of random. Well, one day they might need to use this. No, he's talking about things that are going on. So he says, um, Peter remembered, and the look of the fig tree cursed, it's withered. And he said, have faith in God. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, if anyone says this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and doesn't have what in his heart? Doubt in his heart. But believe that that will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. Oh, not that cool? That's a great saying. But he, what he said is one of the keys, you can't have doubt in your heart. You can't have doubt in your heart. And then he follows up with the very next verse, and he says, And so when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. Hmm. How many of you know... When you and I hold unforgiveness, where do we hold it? Our heart. So you and I could be holding a couple of words. See, grace is grace a gift. Or did you earn it, Landon? It's not of works, lest no one should boast. There's a scripture. Yeah, that, that is the scripture. So grace to, to any one of us, if I'm going to receive grace, I'm going to have to receive it by faith. If I'm going to receive grace, I can't. It's not by my works, but if I'm holding someone by their works, then, then I can't receive grace. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hinge point. There's a hang up. Okay. So this is Matthew chapter, this is the Mark chapter 11. Well, if we just, just roll, the, roll the page back. There's some incredible animosity that happened in a unified tri- you know, group of disciples, the tribe, the 12. Or, you know, it wasn't the tribe of Israel, but you understand. The 12 and Jesus. Two of them, in Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 45, James and John, sons of Zebedee, so these two brothers, were buddies, they're like, hey, Jesus, okay, came to Jesus, teacher, teacher, we want to ask you to do whatever we ask. And he says, what do you want me to do for you guys? What's up? What do you, what do you want me to do? So here come these two brothers, like, hey, Jesus, Jesus, hey, hey, you know you called us at the boats, you know, and we left everything to follow you. And since that day, when we left everything to follow you, I mean, this, this is a little creative liberty I'm taking here, right? It doesn't say this, but this is, I'm just throwing this out there. Just, we kind of feel entitled. Uh, you owe me? Okay, maybe you don't owe me, but th- we are here compared to, you know, all the rest of them. We left every. We're deserving. Uh, they replied, let, let one of us sit on your right hand and the other one on your left hand in your glory. Okay, let's keep going here. Hey, you don't know what you asked because Jesus said, can, can you drink the cup I, I drink or be baptized with the baptism I'm about to be baptized with? Uh, we can, they answered. Jesus said, you will drink of the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. But uh, to sit on my right hand or my left hand, that's not for me to grant. These places belong to, to those for whom they have been prepared. When... When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. I wonder what that looked like. Can you believe those son of a guns? Can you? Can, they're, they're, here's the thing. Like, you're kind of like are walking with Jesus. And Jesus is up here. I curse you, fig tree. And everyone's back there going, James and John. Unbelief, and Jesus is like, I curse that fig tree, and they're like, 
hey, look, the tree's getting cursed. Hey, look, did you guys see that? We missed it because we had something else going on. You can miss the words of God when something else is going on. When something else is going on in the home because I'm counting what I see, I can miss the words of God. So what does the Lord bring? He says, uh, the doubt that's in your heart. He said, before you think you're going to even do anything like what just happened, you're going to have to address what's going on on right here. Don't think you can walk by faith and not by sight all in one area of your life and not another area. We're deceived when we think that everything can be by faith, except for this one little area right here where I'm unwilling to yield. Again, make sure you heard that clearly. I'm unable, willing, unwilling. So let's keep going here. Um, God designed you and I, uh, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Is this good? Is Are we okay teaching here? Okay. Um, because just what I know, El Trio will still be there. All right, um, Romans chapter eight tells us that we're we are been designed to be led by His Spirit. Children of God, the Bible says, are led by the Spirit of God. We're to be led. We are designed to be led by His Spirit. But so many times, what happens is what leads us is not our spirit. It's this right here. What we think, what we feel, what we okay. So often. Um, <laughs> So often in this, in this world, uh, we get the world's wisdom. Look, look at this, and, I, and I'm talking about perception. When we move perception above reception. When we, what we perceive with our eyes becomes greater than what we've heard from the Lord. This is when we operate and we move to worldly wisdom that's not just worldly, but truly is devilish. Let's go to James chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. He says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show for it by his good conduct, by his good deeds, done in humility that come from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your what? In your hearts. He's dealing with hearts here. Why? Because he looks at the heart, but he also looks, we're designed to look with the heart. He looks at the heart, but we're designed to be led here from the inner inward man. So he said, when something's going on on the inside of you, he says, if you're going to walk in wisdom, hey, but hold, let's talk about what's going on. You think you're walking in wisdom, but when something's in your heart, you are walking in wisdom, but it's not wisdom from above. When something's going on in your heart, when you got unforgiveness, when you got bitterness, when you got slander, when you got critiquing, when you are counting the suffered wrongs, when you've become infected, It will affect the course of your life. It will affect the, how you respond. It will make it to where you and I can't respond in faith. And there will be a whole lot of impossible. There will be a whole lot of impossible. So he says this. He says, uh, but if you harbor bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your hearts, don't boast in it or deny the truth. <laughs> I love that. It's like the statement. You can lie to your heart, but your heart won't lie to you. Are you good? Are we good? Man, are we good? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Shut up. What's up? What's up? No, I, I, I'm not saying anything's going on between us, but I'm talking about a sit, like if there's a situation, we good, honey? We good? Because it doesn't seem like we're good. No, we good. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Fine. It, we're fine. It's fine. Fine. What fine is it? Is it fine? Is it fine? Fine? Is it fine? Like what? I'm still trying to discover the equation to figure out. All right. Hey, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Okay. Leave no place. Let's see. I think he says, uh, don't don't lie about it. Don't deny the truth. He says because there's wisdom that's coming. And this wisdom does not come from above, but it's earthly. 
It's unspiritual and it's demonic. So it, 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 he kind of hits it a few different ways. He says not only is it natural, but it didn't come from the Lord, but it's also demonic. He said, you, you kind of, you're moving yourself. I think this is interesting how we, we go from, it doesn't come from heaven, but it goes to earthly. You see what they did? Well, why did they leave that can of Coke there? Well, why did they only put the gas cans right there when I asked them to go get gas and, and, and they just left them right by the tractor instead of putting them in the tractor? This might have happened. So it's earthly. Now, I move from earthly to undoing unspiritual. I go from what I would know, believe, like what I really know, and I'm going to, nah. Because of this. It's because of that. And that's why I'm going to let him know next time. You not we need to be too busy for your pa. Or I'm going to give you the paw. That's this kind of, maybe not all the way that way, but that's what was going on. Upset. You upset? You upset? Upset. Can I tell you if you're upset, it's easy to be double-minded. If you're upset, it's easy to pick a lot of different words that you're trying to get what's right, but you can't get what's right. And you're trying as much as you want what's right. You're trying to get what's right, but you just can't pick it, and you're just frustrated. Did you hear that crack from the mic? That was pretty good. I didn't know if the mic picked it up. I turned and went, whoop. All right. That's, let's keep going here. For where jealousy and selfish ambition, there will be disorder in every practice. But wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peace-loving, gentle, accommodating, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace, reap the fruits of righteousness. Uh, it's so, one of the things, it's so, how do you know when you're listening to, uh, again, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about dealing with unbelief, okay? We're talking about yielding to the inward man uh, and, and why fasting is so vital uh, to overcome and to be able to clarify and really hear clear in our homes, in our lives. It, there's outward signs that speak to us, but oftentimes it's not just what's going on, on the outside that I need to deny my eyes to about. I need to deny myself because I've been being hurt too much. You've been hurt? How easy do you get hurt? Hmm? How easy do you get hurt? You know, they didn't they didn't call me on my birthday. At 8 o'clock, they waited till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, what, am I not even important? How easy do you get hurt? Well, they made fun of me, blah, 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 blah. They're like, ha, 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 they made a fat joke, and it wasn't very funny because I don't like fat jokes, but I laughed it off. But how easy do you get hurt? How easy do you get hurt? This matters how easy you get hurt. Because when I get hurt easy, it's because my flesh is ruling me. And if I get hurt, then here's what's happening. I'm counting suffered wrong. If I'm counting suffered wrongs, even if I hold faith, it's not working because faith works by love. So one of the keys to deny the flesh that we should be teaching is not just, hey, Johnny, you need to share. Hey, Johnny, make sure you say your bedtime prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wait. What? Anyway, <laughs> pray the Lord my soul to take. All right. I had that one up in our, our room when I was a kid. All right. <clears throat> when something happens to you and how easy you get hurt, um, one of the keys to, to recognizing, uh, oh, there's just so much I got. I'm like on page, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Um, so I want, I want to just give you a story real quick. Wait, if you're getting hurt, can I tell you you also hurt people? This is, all, this is also a, one of those things that just helps us. It just helps us know and helps us believe the best. Okay? Um, the other day, we were uh, pressure washing uh, our, some concrete at the house because we had 
moved in and, you know, things were messy and we were just trying to get things clean. And I told my kids, hey, because what was happening is the water was running into the dirt yard and then you'd have to go pick something up and you walk into the dirty yard. And right after where we just walked in the dirty yard, we walk and we just wash there. Okay. So I said, hey, boys, we can't be stepping in the dirt and doing blah, 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 blah. And so, and, and while we're trying to wash it. So what, anyway, what happened was, I, unbeknownst to me, um, I was told later on, Dad, you told us that, but you were also leaving tracks. I wasn't trying to leave tracks. Can I tell you that you're probably not trying to leave tracks? But you are. That's for some of this morning. You're, you, you're, you're talking about everybody else's tracks. And they're dirt tracks. But you're leaving tracks. And the answer to that is forgiveness. The cleansing or the clearing of the air it's forgiveness. Beforehand. Forgive. Because it's impossible, a relation, it's impossible for a relationship to last if forgiveness is not a part. Let me say it this way. It's impossible for a family to flourish if forgiveness is not the culture of the home. It's weird how this happens in our house. It's happened in our house before. And it's probably happened in your house before if you have kids. One of the kids toots in the car. And they're cool with it. But the other ones, not so cool with it. Right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so a lot of times it's like whack them in the shoulder. What are you doing? Quit doing that. Right? On a road trip, an hour later. Had some McDonald's. <laughs> Except for now it's not him anymore. Now it's this one. What are you doing? Whack, whack, whack. But the one, he's cool with it. Why? Because somehow we handle our own stink. I, <laughs> it's true. Go into a, go into a bathroom. Oh, God. If that was you, you sat in it. You sat with it. You were on your phone with it. But you all good. You all cleaned up. Good. No, you're not. You're leaving tracks. We all leave tracks. Do you ever... Tell the story about how you and blah, 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 and how you're in the right and how you're in the right. You need to just do this and go, oh, shoot. You know what? I have to go back. Hey, I'm sorry for holding you at a standard that I myself couldn't perform. My heart has been holding things against you, and I've been struggling to tap into the grace that God so freely gives because my heart has been clouded not just by unbelief but by bitterness by slander by getting upset at James and John for asking for this and they know better and the Lord said listen there's some impossible things like a mountain that could be moved but it's not going to be moving when you got some stuff going on in your heart. Because what we're talking about is pulling something from here into here. And where you and I are, are unwilling to address is the avenue, the gate, the valve of faith. And it's blocked with unforgiveness and unbelief. How do I war against that? I kill the flesh. No, I'm not talking about... 
I'm talking about denying yourself. What is it that hurts? You want something impossible? You want restoration in something? Don't go into fasting trying to get something. Recognize the reason you go into fasting is because you're leaving tracks. And you don't even know it. In your home, well, they need to love me like this. They need to love me like that. They need to love me. You're just told me right there that you're not giving your hundred. See, it takes your, all of your, all, you give all, whether they give it or not. You all, but the reason you're, you're holding back your reserve because your, your heart's holding something else. It's hard to love well. It's hard to have a great night, guys, with ladies, wives, when the heart is holding something else. And that unbelief, again, it's not just earthly. It's not just causes you and I to move to being unspiritual, to undo what the Holy Spirit would bring, but it actually is demonic. And we wonder how the enemy's at work in our lives. He's not at work out here. And I tell you, it's when we get infected. And when we get infected, we need a flush. We need a flush of the flesh. And that flush of that flesh is fasting. Denying self. Turning down the volume of the flesh so that you can hear and yield to what the Spirit of God says above all that you see, think, or feel. I'm going to close with that. I've got a lot more notes. Got to, it's got to be a discipline. <laughs> it's like you didn't know you were coming to church today to have to be to- told something that the Bible says that we should maybe uh, be giving, be fasting. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to read, I'm going to close with the word on fasting. When you fast, do not be somber like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces to show men, oh, I'm fasting. What are they actually used to doing? They want more glory to their flesh. If you're fasting, denying your flesh, part of denying your flesh, ain't nobody know about your fast. Oh, I'm fasting. I'm sorry, I can't have that chocolate cake. <clears throat> I guess these are the pants that I wore last week. Dad's uh, wrapper. You know, when you get home from church. Are you critiquing me? Are you slandering me? You need to fast. No root beer barrels for you. They don't disfigure their faces. The show men they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they already have their reward. More, more glory to the flesh. And you know, where pride is present, where pride is present, there's always great destruction. It may not be your fall, but what you love the most will, is falling. Truth I tell you, they already have the reward. But when you fast, and said, anoint your head when you fast. This is the discipline. You say, well, what am I supposed to fast? I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't ask me. Well, I don't know how to hear from the Lord. Well, I better tell you what to fast right now. I bet he'll show you right now. It's this. You need to, let, you need to lay this down. You need to, you need to, you're, you're dealing with this. You need to sharpen your ear on that. Maybe some of you are looking to sharpen your ear and hear clearly there's a decision that you just have been struggling. Like, I, I don't know, should we do this? Should we buy this or shouldn't we buy this? Should we do that or shouldn't we do that? And, and there's your flesh is saying, ah, I want that. I really want that. I really want that. But inside, there's also that check. But you're not able to yield clearly because it's like you're double-minded. Deny your flesh. You'll find that as you do, and I'm not saying just even for even the length of that. I don't know. The Holy Spirit knows. And he'll speak to your heart. And as you yield to that heart, you see, you didn't, you didn't get that out here. Uh, this is why sometimes these, well, we're going to fast for 21 days, everyone. Uh, I'm not against fasting for 21 days or 30 days. But what would be better would be that you would get from the Lord what you're supposed to do to deny yourself. 
because you got it from the Lord, not from just Pastor Nate. When you sit in the house and you hear the word of God, hopefully what you're writing down in your notebook is not just what I said. Hopefully you're writing down exactly what God said and you realize, wow, God's been talking to me all these years and I didn't even realize it was him. Get it from him. Because what you're looking for, even in the re- restoration, even in uh, the, the, the child, be it, it, it doesn't come from somebody's hands. It comes from him. So getting you and me, he, he said, now without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he said, but everything is possible to those who believe. You can't believe unless you've received a word from him. Faith requires you inquiring. Thank you, Lord. So wash your head, anoint your head, wash your face, so that your fast will not be obvious to men, but only to your Father, who is what? Unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. So many times we want grace. We want the gifts of God, but we're hung up on, and what the hang up so many times is, is you and me so fixated on what we see. If we go to Romans chapter 4, where, where, where Abraham, he, he said, tells us that he called some things that are not as though they were. Romans chapter 4, he called some things that are not as though they were. It's right in that same passage that talks about how grace, by grace, or through faith, by, through faith, by grace. Or put it up there, yeah. I made you father of the nations who gives living to the dead, calls those things that are not as though they were. I, would have, I should have really went further back up. But he talks about by grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. Got to get our faith working. If we're going to get our faith working, it's going to take some prayer. It's going to take some fasting. It's going to take some denial of what I see on the outside and stop yielding to earthly unspiritual, devilish wisdom. Because guess what? what? When you and I yield to that, it sure makes a lot of sense. But it's absent of the grace. It's absent of the things that our heart so longs for. So, let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord, for grace in this house. I'm going to have a house full of grace. Because I'm going to deny my flesh. It's a flesh fast. A flesh fast. We're going to fast and we're going to, we're going to eliminate some things this morning. Some things you've been trying and dealing with in your house for a while. It's a flesh fast. You've been counting too much. You hurt too easy. Flesh fast. Father, thank you today. Let's just bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Father, I thank you today. For every family here, everyone under the sound of my voice, your desire to pour pour fully your grace into their marriage, into their home, through their family, to restore father-son relationships and with their daughters. It's an answer straight from you. And we say thank you for it this morning. I need to deny myself and tell myself no. I've been looking to them when you've been desiring to deal with me. So deal with me, Lord. Show me where I've been wrong where I've left tracks how much I also needed to be forgiven forgive me Lord for holding others to a standard I myself couldn't keep this morning I just receive your grace into my life Holy Spirit give you permission and I desire you to 
show me and remind me. Where I'm counting. What I've counted. So that I can deal with me. I'll deal with me. Thank you for your grace in my family. For the impossible, for the change that I sought for with tears, thank you for the change that I've sought for for years that really is just right there, not yielded to, not governed by what I see, I think, or I feel but by your word. And I receive that today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you don't know where you'd spend eternity before we go. Um, man, I'll tell you, people are giving their lives to Jesus all over. The time is short. Jesus is coming. And it's your choice. It's not mama's faith. It's not your dad's faith. It's not coming to church. The Bible says it's this, it's just that you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. If you've never made the confession of Jesus as Lord, not just Savior, the leader of my life, I want to lead you in a prayer to make Jesus your Lord today. Is that you raise your hand right where you're at. Thank you, Lord. Any hands right where you're at. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't see any hands. You know what that means? We're going to continue to do this. Go beyond the four walls. Equipped. Equipped to love people and to carry the message that every person has been given here. And a ministry to reconcile people back to God. Listen, never forget where you came from. How God reached down and found us. And with that same love, instead of judgment, what what we reach forward with is grace and truth. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you go today.